Chapter 5. Map and PAR. In this section of the Radiant Introductory Training Series, we will discuss post-synthesis constraints and post-place and route implementation checks for Radiant projects. Chapter 5 consists of seven sections. In the first section of the chapter, Creating Constraints with Device Constraint Editor, we will introduce Radiant's Device Constraint Editor, and how it can be used to create physical constraints for a project's device. In Section 2 of the chapter, Creating PTC Constraints with Post-Synthesis Timing Constraint Editor, Radiant's Post-Synthesis Timing Constraint Editor is introduced, and how it can be used to create timing constraints after synthesis. In Section 3 of Chapter 5, Using Physical Designer, we will discuss Radiant's Physical Designer, and what it can be used for. In the fourth section of the chapter, using Power Calculator, we will discuss Radiant's Power Calculator tool, and how it can be used to calculate the static and dynamic power consumption of a design. In the fifth section of the chapter, using Timing Analyzer, we will discuss Radiant's Timing Analyzer tool, and how it can be used to check a design's timing performance after place and route. In section six of the chapter, using Run Manager, the Run Manager tool will be introduced, as well as how it can be used to run the project flow for multiple implementations in a project. Finally, in the seventh section of this chapter, we will discuss Radiant's ECO Editor tool. Chapter 5, Section 5. Using Timing Analyzer. In this section of the video series, we will be discussing Radiant's Timing Analyzer tool, and how it can be used to check if a design is meeting its timing requirements, after it has been placed and routed. Radiant's Timing Analyzer tool can be used to analyze the most critical paths in a project after place and route. Another useful feature of Timing Analyzer is that it can be used to cross probe paths with Physical Designer. With that said, there are two ways Radiance Timing Analyzer tool can be launched. The first way is to select the Timing Analyzer icon from Radiance toolbar. The second way to launch Timing Analyzer is to select tools from Radiance menu bar and then Timing Analyzer from the list of options that appear. There are no differences between these two methods for launching the Timing Analyzer. Once Timing Analyzer has launched, a window like the figure on the screen should appear. As can be seen from the figure, the Timing Analyzer tool consists of a few different sections. At the bottom of the window, are the Timing Analyzer tabs. These tabs contain information about the most critical paths in a design, and can be used to switch the Active Timing Analyzer view. The default Timing Analyzer tab is called General Information. At the top of the General Information tab is the General Project Information, which displays information about a project like the selected device, package, and speed grade. Underneath the Project Information section are the Timing Analysis settings. The information in this section of the General Information tab are the current Timing Analysis settings. Now that we've discussed the basics of Timing Analyzer's General Information tab, we are going to discuss how the Timing Analysis settings can be modified. By default, the Timing Analyzer tool will display the 10 most critical paths for setup and hold violations. A useful feature of Radiance Timing Analyzer tool is that these Timing Analysis settings can be modified to change the requirements for critical paths and how many paths are observed. To begin modifying the Timing Analysis settings for Timing Analyzer runs, select Edit from Radiance menu bar. From the drop-down that appears, select the option called Timing Option Settings. Doing this will open the Timing Option Setting window. The Timing Option Setting window can be seen from the figure on the slide. As can be seen from the figure, the Timing Option window contains several options that can be used to modify how Timing Analyzer functions. The default values for each of these settings depend on the place and route timing analysis settings of the active strategy in an implementation. The first option in this window is Run Mode, which controls the type of timing analysis being performed. By default this will be set to Setup and Hold, however, either Setup or Hold can also be selected from the dropdown. The second and third options, called Speed for Setup and Speed for Hold, correspond to the performance grade of the FPGA being analyzed. By default, these options are set to M, which corresponds to the fastest possible speed grade. The next option in the Timing Option Setting window is Report Format. This option can be used to select between how the timing analysis reports are displayed. The two types of report options are called Lattice Standard or Diamond Style. 
The next few settings control how some of Timing Analyzer's additional tabs function. We have not covered these additional tabs yet, however, they will be covered later on in the video. The critical and unconstrained endpoints path number limit settings are used to control the number of paths that are reported in the critical endpoint summary and unconstrained endpoint summary tabs. The next setting, number of paths per constraint, controls the number of paths reported in the critical and unconstrained path summary tabs. The final setting in the options section of this window, and point number limit controls the number of critical path endpoints that are reported in the critical endpoint tab. Finally, the maximum slack limit option, which can be seen at the bottom of the window, is used to control the maximum delay for paths that are reported in the query tab. With that said, we are now going to discuss some of Timing Analyzer's additional tabs. The first Timing Analyzer tab we are going to review is the Critical Endpoint Summary tab, whose location in the Timing Analyzer tab section can be seen from the figure on the slide. The number of paths reported in this tab depends on the timing analysis settings for a project. If no changes were made to the timing analysis settings, then by default, the endpoints of the 10 most critical paths in a Radiant project will be reported. If fewer than 10 critical endpoints are found when timing analysis is run, then only the critical paths that were found will be reported. The information in this tab is similar to the critical endpoint summary tab, however, only the, the slack and critical endpoint of each path are displayed here. Additionally, the rightmost column details the type of timing analysis that was performed to obtain the critical path. A useful feature of the Timing Analyzer tool is that its reported critical paths can be directly cross-probed with Radiant's Physical Designer tool. To cross-probe a critical path in Timing Analyzer, select a path from one of Timing Analyzer's critical path, critical endpoint, or query tabs. Selecting a path in one of these windows will display additional information about that path, as can be seen from the example on the slide. The top section of the window that appears contains additional information about the endpoint that was selected. Underneath the endpoint details is information about the paths that are part of the critical endpoint. This information contains two tabs. The first tab called Data Path contains information about all of the data paths in a critical endpoint's path. The second tab, called Clock Paths, contains information about the various source and destination clocks in a critical endpoint's path. To cross-probe a path from this window in Physical Designer, right-click the name of a path from the Data Paths section, as can be seen from the example on the slide. From the drop-down that appears, select either of the Show in Physical Designer options to view a critical path in Physical Designer's placement or routing modes. One important thing to remember is that the worst paths in a design can also be cross-probed using Radiance generated timing reports. The final timing analyzer tab that we are going to discuss is the query tab. The purpose of the query tab is to search for specific paths in a design by specifying the start and end points for a path. To search for a specific path in a design, select a component from the resources section of the query tab as can be seen from the example on the slide. With a component selected as either the start or end point for a search, click either of the greater than icons in the two and from sections to add it to that section. One important thing to remember is that if there are multiple components added in the to and from sections, the query will search for paths with any combination of the to and from points. Another important thing to note is that components can be removed as a start or end point by selecting that component in either the two or from sections of the window, and then selecting the less than icon, as can be seen from the example on the slide. Another thing to remember, is that the double greater than and less than icons, are used to add all of the paths, or remove all of the paths from their respective sections. Finally, once the start and end points have been configured for a query, click the search icon to begin searching for paths. Any paths that begin and end with any of the start and end points in the two, and from sections, will appear in the bottom portion of the Query tab window, as can be seen from the example on the slide. One final feature of the Query tab is that it can also be used to search for paths containing specific clocks. To search for paths with specific clocks, use the Source and Destination Clock options at the top of the Timing Analyzer window to select which source and destination clocks to include in the path search. That concludes this section of the introductory training series. To view the next video in the chapter, select the video titled Section 5.6, 
using Run Manager.